from the lunch tray here and welcome to World of Warships. Now, taking a look at the team lineup, because that is one of the most important things you can do in starting off a battle in World of Warships, to know what your team lineup is and what the enemy team lineup is, because that can impact how you may play the battle. And we'll circle back around that uh, to that in a minute, but we are here on Trident in domination mode in a ranked battle. We're here in the tier seven German battle cruiser, the Prince Heinrich, which uh, those of you following on the YouTube know I've been having a bit of a good time in lately. And I teased this battle last week on the community channel on YouTube. And now you're gonna be able to finally see uh, this battle take place. And there's gonna be a lot happening right at the end. And you may find yourself on the edge of this, your seat. Uh, I don't say that just to try to pump up the video, but I, I just say that literally because that's sometimes I am like that when I'm watching someone else's replay. And they had a really extremely close battle, and this is going to be a battle and uh, too close for comfort. So, so in the WoWs wiki on the Prince Heinrich, uh, normally I would kind of read the player opinion, but it is so long. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to link it in the description below. But what I am going to read off are the pros and cons, and we'll talk about um, my positioning. I spawned on the right flank, and so I'm going to support uh, the C cap side. Pros. Quick turret traverse with a 360 degree rear turret. 380 millimeter guns capable of overmatching up to 50, uh, 26 millimeter. Sorry, accurate battle cruiser gun dispersion, unusually long range torpedoes with excellent firing angles. You have 10 kilometer torpedoes carries hydroacoustic search with an exceptionally long range of 5.5 kilometers. Fast reloading damage control party. Cons: small health pool, third worst tech tree battleship in tier. Thin bow and stern plating, definitely true. Limited number of damage control parties. Atrocious AA suite. And short range main battery guns. So, moving up here into C, uh, basically what I'm wanting to do is see how my team is going to position themselves on the map. Uh, right now, uh, you can see it's Myself and Art Miyoko and a Sims uh, off to my right. And this is a three destroyer uh, matchup. So I really have to be conscious of destroyers. You can see we have two on the flank here. And meaning I'm gonna have to turn on my hydroacoustic search because I am imagining there are most likely torpedoes on the way. And it's much easier to try to dodge and avoid when you're sailing away from the torpedoes and you can find a, a gap, a window where you can position your ship. And our head acoustic search is picking them up. So what I should be going for is that gap right there that I just aimed at, but I overturned with my steering gear or with my rudder. I didn't correct it enough time to get myself placed in that window. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I can get in this small gap between these two, but I mess it up and we are gonna eat a torpedo regardless. So. That was just mishandling of the Princess Heinrich on my part. Uh, otherwise, we could have done a little bit better job quickly. in finding that gap. So now we're kind of angled away, trying to see what's going on. We have this Colorado who's been showing a lot of broadside in a distance. So still hoping to get more shots on him. As you can see me kind of peeking over the island, see if I can see him clearly or not. Spam the M key, uh, the map key, so I can get a little bit of an overview to see if I can get the positioning a little bit better with the main guns. So with the cons of this ship, you are definitely, you have thin bow and stern plating. And that's something you have to be really mindful of. Um, the enemy team, uh, if enemy players know of it, they can definitely um, capitalize on that weakness uh, here on the Prince Heinrich. So you have to be really conscious of how you are angling often. Because otherwise, you can take a lot of damage at the your stern and bow. The limited damage, uh, limited number of damage control parties is also something you have to be very careful of. So we only have four, and I think we used one on the flooding we took when we hit that torpedo. So we really have to manage it well, and also that you only start off with three repair parties instead of four. So you really have to get a hang of when do I use these consumables and when do I not? So I'm moving up uh, towards the enemy Blisk, Bliskawicha. 
<laughs> I don't know how to exactly pronounce that ship. Um, having a destroyer on your flank uh, can be really bad. And so that is why I'm pushing here. I'm also wanting to support our sims because uh, we need to be able to take out this enemy destroyer um, and take pressure off uh, our flank because then we can focus more on what is happening towards uh, the enemy base uh, at Bravo and maybe even be able to help our team out at A. Um, but for now, this Blisk needs to go. And the longer our secondaries are firing, the more accurate they're getting um, to get that full 60% uh, accuracy effect. So when he goes dark, uh, the percentage starts to drop in terms of the accuracy. So you see how this Colorado, um, he's kind of just sitting there. So we're going to take advantage of that. We're going to aim a little bit higher, um, trying to hit that upper belt superstructure where we should get some decent damage in. So one pin and one over pin, not quite enough to kill him, but we also have our uh, one rear turret that doesn't turn 360 degrees coming about, um, but our Arp Miyoko polishes him off. So now it's just the York further up on the 10 line uh, and the Blisk. And the Blisk is out of the smoke screen because I am detected. Or it could be the enemy destroyer over on E5 that's come out around, but I don't think so. I think the Blisk has left his smoke. So we're gonna go ahead and keep pushing because I, I really want to finish off this Blisk so then I can turn back um, and help uh, my team more on the flank. So uh, there he is. So he kind of decides to slow down for a minute. I don't know if he's popping off torpedoes there or not. Um, but we're gonna start hammering him with our main battery and our secondary battery guns. Also, I'd be careful with the York. Uh, the York is can get some decent damage in on us. Torpedoes, direct front. And there are the torpedoes that I, I thought the Blisk was firing. So we had our hydroacoustic search torpedoes, up uh, just in time to be able to deal with that. So we found a nice gap, and we're going to launch our main battery guns again. He's almost dead, but we want to make sure he goes down. We don't want him to go dark. And we pick up the kill. Now this is a, there's two decisions I can make here. I can keep pushing the York uh, up the 10 line, or I can turn back uh, towards B uh, because, or not B, uh, towards C. Uh, Charlie cap because our team has collapsing very quickly uh, at the a cap um, So that, those two decisions I can make I decide that it's best for me instead of trying to chase a kiting York because that can be a real pain You can lose a lot of health, especially if you start spamming he at me um, that it's not worth it um, Then I'm going to turn back and help out our destroyer uh, our mass uh, over on the one line. If he can get a reset on the Sean horse, uh, that's that would be fantastic. So he acknowledges, but he has the island in between him and the Sean horse. So we don't know how he's going to be able to do. Our Vastaraz is running up along the A line, being chased by the uh, enemy mass. So things aren't looking good for him. And then our Mar Miyoko is sailing towards Bravo. Now, when I mentioned the lineup, uh, when you're looking at the matchmaking before the match actually starts, uh, the battle actually starts, um, knowing what ships you're going up against uh, can make a huge um, difference. So I had a really good uh, Sean Horse battle recently and ranked where there were no battleships with torpedoes. So then I just commenced to press W and I just rolled through the whole flank because the enemy battleships couldn't do anything about it. Um, here in this match there, we have the uh, enemy Sean Horse who has torpedoes, so I have to keep that in mind. The other thing that you really have to keep in mind is the Russian battleships, something like the, the Sinop uh, or the Poltava. Those are two really strong uh, Russian battleships, and they're very tanky. And that is where Prince Heinrich begins to suffer a little bit, um, because you simply can't... Um, do a main battery versus main battery gunfight um, because the Sinop, the uh, Poltava will win that match every time. But what you can win is if you're just close enough where your secondaries are able to fire and getting those um, in just because those guns can uh, definitely hurt. Now we've been keeping on the Leon who just fired at us. I'm a little slow to cut the throttle and turn in. I could have done that a little bit sooner, but we take just uh, minimal damage there. Nothing really bad. And I go ahead and decide it's time to go ahead and burn my next repair party. So we're still keeping an eye on what this Leon is doing. Um, 
he is sailing up towards our Miyoko, who successfully flipped uh, Bravo. But we kind of have issues now because we have an ARP, uh, or ARP, um, an Italian destroyer. Uh, I don't know if I'm even going to attempt to try to pronounce the name of that ship. Um, but he's pushing in towards us. We also have the enemy Sharn horse who's pushing in, who just uh, took some shots at us. But I'm trying to help out our Miyoko, um, who's over here on the flank. So we do take out one of his main battery guns, because our op Miyoko just basically needs to kite um, and get away. But with the Sharn horse and the Italian destroyer pushing in, it's really going to take the attention, and we're going to have to focus on them. So we really want our secondaries focusing on uh, the Italian destroyer, because the destroyer who can uh, has the better concealment, of course, you know, we're in a battleship, um, can be a real pain for us, who can torpedo us while staying dark. I am taking a risk in showing broadside here um, to the Sharn horse, but he has been spamming HE so far. Um, because I need to get set up in a position, um, and you've, you kind of, maybe you're beginning to see a theme of this from the last battle, um, in this battle as well, where you do a lot better, I think in my opinion, when you're able to kind of have this uh, kiting away um, position, when you have enemy ships pushing into you, because again, you're being able to set the terms of the engagement. Now, our Sims was shooting at the Sharn Horse multiple times, uh, I'm not entirely sure why he didn't shoot the Italian destroyer instead, um, but he's gone down. Um, he was supporting us, so I'm thankful for that. And we're going to take out the enemy Italian destroyer. So now it's time to deal with the enemy Sharn Horse. Another reason why it is best for me to be in a kiting uh, position here is that the Sharn Isle, I'm going to deny the Sharn Horse ever getting his torpedoes off onto me. They only have a 6 kilometer range, or my torpedoes have a 10 kilometer range, and he's sailing into me. Even if you're something like the Sharnhurst here with six kilometer torpedoes or agonizer now, um, you are more in control in that scenario. So we get set on fire. We go ahead and use our uh, repair party because we've already used our damage control party. And we're going to be playing with our throttle. We're not going to be going full speed the whole time. Kind of letting the Sharn horses drift in a little bit closer. Uh, going to chew him up more and more as he approaches. Now our enemy Moss is still alive for the time being. It looks like he's going to go back towards Alpha Cap. Uh, and we'll just continue handling the Sharn Horse. We have two fires, so we're going to instantly use the damage control party on that. Since the Sharn Horse has been using a lot of uh, HE. So we almost have him. And then we're going to switch our focus to the Leon. So when you're fighting and you have a enemy ship you're about to take out, it's good to then, okay, who's my next target? So that's often looking at a mini-map off to the right where I'm waiting in between my main battery uh, turrets reloading. Now you may have noticed we have Luchens, which has the secondary battery reload time uh, increase. I don't quite remember what the percentage is, but we can look at that in the upgrading commander build video tomorrow. But, um... Yeah, looking, finding out what is your next target, so then you're able to then quickly um, transition into um, helping your team out. Um, as our Moss has got himself in a bit of a tricky situation with the enemy Moss, uh, where they're both on top of each other with similar health pools. Now our attention is going to be uh, focused, or switched to the Leon, I should say, who's pushing in. So we're going to get turned out a little bit, get our front turrets off, and we're going to go ahead and use our next uh, repair party. And we're going for the superstructure, uh, so you can get decent damage there. Unfortunately, our moss dies before he's able to take out the enemy moss, but we will be seeing that moss later. Um, so be uh, stay tuned for that. Now these 10 kilometer torpedoes, I go ahead and fire them because the Leon is pushing in. The York reveals himself, and the attention is going to be switched to the Leon, or sorry, the, the York. The Leon, we're going to set our secondary battery uh, on. And you can see I'm kind of like, oh, who should I shoot? Who should I shoot? Um, and it needs to be the Leon. He's on low enough health, and we don't want him to just simply turn out and disengage. Because if you look at the score timer, the enemy team is going to win uh, roughly six seconds before we will, uh, give or take, whenever the points tick. So I come to a full stop, and this is important that I'm not just gonna, oh, let me just sail around in a circle and charge these uh, guys, uh, but that we're just gonna stay uh, 
slow down, and now we're actually reversing. We're going to get closer, so our secondary is going to start shooting up the enemy Leon. So basically, to get a win off here, I need to be able to get some kills here. Um, otherwise, the difference will be too much for me to make up um, with how the point's ticking and that we no longer have any points coming in as the enemy Leon steps onto the cap. So basically, we need kills if we're going to win and point out. As you can see, we're just on 944 points right now, and now we're on 984 after taking the York out. So the York would have been much better off being behind an island, spamming me, um, but he decided to come out in the open, uh, much to our thankfulness. So this enemy Leon is actually showing a, a good decent portion of broadside. And he's actually, in the moment, he's gonna expose more of the weakness on the stern. Um, and you'll see how much damage you take from that. But he's showing a lot of broadside, so we're gonna punish that uh, for sure, as our secondaries are going. And our health is going down. We're still at 984, but then the enemy Moss, for some reason, unbeknownst to me. Okay, watch the stern hit. Yeah, he almost one shot at us, so 11,000 damage. So things are not looking good. The enemy Moss smells blood in the water, and we just need one kill. One kill, and it'll be an instant win. So I decide we're going to go for the Moss, but our secondaries are super accurate right now. And 178 health. Oh! That was really close. We were legit just about to die with over 170 health left. Um, but our secondaries kicked in beautifully right at the end there with how accurate they were and taking out the enemy moss, which means instant win. So uh, we got two close quarters, Dreadnought, Kraken Unleashed, and High Caliber with 115,000 damage. Um, you can see 182 secondary ribbons, and eight defended. So again, just that setup positioning when you have an enemy team pushing into you is really ideal in my opinion with the Prince Heinrich. Um, just because even when you're showing your belt, uh, you can usually bounce a lot of that um, incoming fire. Uh, but the enemy Leon definitely took advantage of that stern weakness, so you have to be conscious of that. So you got over 2,300 base experience, uh, really good with the five kills, and our Arp Miyoko getting that enemy Colorado earlier in the match. Almost 2 million potential damage, and here you can see the damage layout uh, amongst the team. The enemy team would have won if that moss would have just stayed dark or if he's if he had smoke um and then started shooting me um so he definitely threw the game there at the end so don't be like the moss uh, don't be greedy just stay dark <laughs> uh, let your team get the win uh, or having um that trust in leon because he was just about to finish me off after that massive hit but yeah so there's prince heinrich i will be doing an upgrading commander build video on the prince heinrich tomorrow uh, I'll be talking about Luchens, whom I currently have on the Prince Heinrich, but I use him on several battleships. And with how I'm envisioning the commander build for him going, uh, we might have to change some things up with getting some other German commanders uh, on use on my other battleships. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And until next time, take care.